Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another very exciting beta read. This could be amazing. Oh my goodness. We did what? Two, three in the past two days. So, uh, wonderful Sunday. Great time to read. So, let's get uh, right into it. Uh, first and foremost, like and subscribe. Five star beta reader, ghost writer, editor. Oh my goodness. And of course, published author. So, let's get those plugs out of the way. Uh oh. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Bright Dreadful Sun, third book. Awesome. Amazing. So good. Uh, not Every Star in the Night, such a good book. My second book ever published. And of course, the Yamikage. Oh my goodness. Library edition. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to pick those up. That would be great. But at the same time, we're not here for my books today. We're here for your books. So this should be awesome. I'm very excited. So I'm in the middle of ghostwriting two other people's books. So I love actually doing the video beta reads. They're getting receptive. They're actually, a lot of people are kind of liking them. So let's just keep doing them, you know? Okay. Uh, so, huge shout out today to Thomas, Thomas Longo, for giving us permission to beta read this awesome work. Alright, uh, so let's see how this breaks down. Um, so, when I do a beta read on Fiverr, it can take hours, and hours, and hours. So what this is, it's more like a speed beta read, for anybody who hasn't seen the channel yet. Speed beta read, it's a compartmentalized, kind of compressed version of that. Right into one chapter. Uh, usually one chapter is probably best because if I did a whole book It would be all day every day. I'd be here for weeks. So with that being said, oh my computer would be like what? <laughs> what are you doing to me? Uh, anyways, so let's uh, just jump right into this. I look at this as if I'm a brand new reader I'm just kind of opening up the book for the first time being like, okay, uh, just kind of checking it out I do not read ahead of these. Uh, so what we are seeing we're gonna be going through for the very first time and, uh, yeah, let's try to keep this one under 30 minutes, because the other ones, uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll keep it under 20 minutes, and then it turns out to be, like, 40 minutes long. Anyways, uh, so, title, very interesting, um, Chasing Death or How to Make Friends and Influence Zombies. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a play off a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Very good book. Uh, if you're into, uh, motivational books, I definitely recommend doing that. Read that one. It's a good one. Now, you readers can't see this, but on the top left of my screen, and uh, my monitor is over there, huh? There is uh, this really good information here. Oh, it's really nice, really nice. So, I can already tell that this author is being very professional. So, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you send things off to, you know, beta readers, editors, etc. When you have a nice presentation, it literally makes the world of a difference. So, uh, good job. And, oh, it actually looks like there's two authors here. Two. Uh, the more the merrier. So, Chasing Death, How to Make Friends and Influence Nazis. So, uh, you know, Nazis are pretty bad people. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> depending on who you talk to, uh, I think 99% of the people would say, uh, yeah, they're pretty bad people. So, uh, let's double check that we're not getting too sensitive here, but I got a feeling that this is going to be a funny thing. So, this is going to be interesting. Uh, for my father, who's always right, okay, beautiful dedication page. So, ladies and gentlemen, so he's separating the dedication page, getting in the exact different page for it. Uh, italicized, nice uh, nice quotes there. Love it. Um, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Like it. Uh, dedication is not sloppy. It is nice and clean. Congratulations uh, to those people that got mentioned. Really good. All right, uh, so I'm already seeing the nice headers there. If you look at the top, at the left and the right, we got some nice headers. Pretty good. Uh, so let me double check something really quick. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, just from an editing standpoint, when you're in these first, uh, like the dedication page, the table of contents, whatnot, uh, top right, he's using page numbers. Okay. Uh, pretty interesting. But for the first parts of the book, you use Roman numerals. So you would see right here, the, the, <laughs> the three I's, the three capital I's. Uh, yeah. So, uh, before in page one, you're using Roman numerals. So if this is still like in that drafting phase or still in the editing phase, I would speak to your editor. And uh, as for Roman numerals, so that is what CMS, or the Spectus, uh, so I tell us, what is this? Uh, Jossel loved the world, so he sent his son on earth. Uh, that's a play off a uh, biblical, that's nice. Uh, so God so loved the world, he sent his only son. Okay, that's, I like that. So Rolling Stone, Get in the Boss, it's really cool, I like this. Uh, kind of a play off something interesting. The man who believes almost exactly the same things he believes, he's a heretic, kill him. Uh, who is the king of heretics? Uh, who wrote five books? on heresy, St. Irenaeus in the uh, first century, really cool, and St. Irenaeus would turn in his grave, <laughs> if you saw this symbol, uh, looks like some sort of a pagan symbol, maybe skull and bones, uh, the Rosicrucian society uses a lot of these, what these are, are called sigils, sometimes, so right here, seems like a very simple, simple symbol, uh, so when you're using it to summon something, it is a sigil, 
But right here, it just seems to be more kind of a logo. We'll see. We'll see. Is there a cult symbolism here? I don't know. So, uh, yeah, we're only doing one chapter today. Let's see what we've got. Now, I know that there's... I wish I could read this whole book in entirety. I'm so busy, dude. Uh, but I'm glad I could get this out of the way. Uh, so, Ishii's dream. Okay, so we're starting with uh, some sort of main character's dream. The Brazilian crypt job, death and brutality. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's actually naming his chapters. More than okay to do that. Sometimes I actually prefer that. And a lot of, I know a lot of readers also prefer when their chapters are named. Um, now, sometimes you could do like a Stephen King type of thing where he's got like 20 chapters in one book. Uh, but they're not, they're not titled. But at the same time, I like this because uh, keep in mind, you know, when you're writing a book and let's say a reader really loves one specific part. They can go back, they can look at the table contents and understand, you know, hey, uh, when he meets the Nazis, uh, it's chapter 7. <laughs> and uh, probably a bad bad encounter for him, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so prologue. Okay, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, the prologue is utilized to set the precedent of the events of the novel at large. So when we're writing the prologue, we're definitely setting that foundation. Same with the introduction. So let's see. Uh, so we got italicized. Uh, from a editor's standpoint, what I would do with this is I'll take prologue, center it. Uh, alternative font. Looks like there's some already alternative font. And then I'll have the symbol either below it, directly below it, or right above it. Anyways, uh, pretty cool. Yep, so the Daily Pickley, London, UK. So ladies and gentlemen, he's starting the novel off with a location. Technically, it's not the first line in the novel, but we're setting a precedent already. So uh, very good, very cool. Double check that we're not using that to... Uh, Strictly symbolized setting <laughs> instead of actually uh, inserting in a correct setting. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Do not use those as a cop-out is what I'm basically saying. Not saying this author is doing it. Just uh, kind of general advice for you re authors out there. So starting off, you know, first sentence, first paragraph, first chapter. We say it all the time. Very important. Very important. They're almost like impact statements in a way. So let's see. Uh, Mistress Kanaishi slept fitfully on her tatami next to large double bed with Cecilia Moran great in the story. Wow. Okay, so what do we got there? We got sensory detail in the mix? Okay. We got starting off the novel with some characters. Not even just one, two, which is very exciting. I like that. So once you start off a novel with characters, definitely go ahead and feel free to elevate them. We have some specific detail here and also a little bit of setting peppered in, okay? Um... Now, you could go ahead and start elevating a lot of these things in this first sentence, but right now, actually, this author has a really healthy first sentence. And as we see here, uh, a very healthy presentation as well. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, when you're sending things off to beta readers, presentation helps. And I found that this is not always the case, but it usually is the case, that when a presentation is beautiful, nice, you can tell the author takes pride in the work, and their writing often follows. Okay, so let's see. Uh, though the room was cool, since we detail her brow was headed in the sweat. And then, so right there, you could uh, reiterate character profile, maybe pepper in a little bit of detail, like, you know, what color brows he has. It might be an indication of her ethnicity, you know, it can contribute to appearance. Sweat and the muffled sound of traffic outside. Uh, utilizing sensory detail here. What I love about what's going on right here is we're coming out the gate strong. Ladies and gentlemen, watch the other videos on this channel where I talk about these manuscripts that come out the gate. Really confusing. So he's coming out the gate on uh, a lot of different cylinders here. So utilizing sensory detail right at the beginning shows that you have the ability to do so. So double check where uh, sensory details are. I just got a message. Uh, double check where sensory detail can be utilized. Now, when you're utilizing sensory detail, more often than not, specifics help. So really getting that specific in there, like something I'm seeing up there. It's not sensory, but he says to Tommy, uh, that's a specific object, as opposed to as if he said, you know, I just ran a bed. So let's see, like, for example, the room was cool. Well, let's not nitpick. <laughs> let's not nitpick too much. I got a, there's a lot of patience here. Uh, panic without reason. She sounded, she, she was surrounded by darkness. Uh, that's a tell, not show. Maybe double check. You can show, not tell there. Darkness and mist. She was tired of panic. Okay, so uh, presentation is really good. Those two sentences are a tell, not show. Okay, we want to show, not tell. And we know that the author has an ability to do that. So uh, we don't have to nitpick every little thing, but double check uh, where you can elevate, where you can get a little bit more specific, and where you can show, not tell. Tells, not shows are not forbidden, of course, but sometimes, and most times, they are probably not the best. So cautious on guard has swiveled. Is she searching for the emptiness around her, but with her advanced vision? Interesting. So she's in a pool of darkness right here. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna have this odd setting here. So we're gonna have a lot of foreign concepts in the novel, or at least it seems that this is beginning with a foreign concept. So uh, when you're writing fantasy fiction, what do we do? We make the foreign feel familiar. We take the unfamiliar and make it feel familiar. 
That's uh, a quotation of good fantasy is when we're in a strange place and we feel as if we know that place even though we've never been there. So let's see. There's Mike, Celia's mouth, breast, chin. Uh, I would, we're starting with the characters. Take it a little bit slow. I mean, it seems like this is already kind of solidified. So maybe redrafts may not be too likely. But uh, this is a great example of where you can pepper in that character profile. Like, uh, so we're saying chin, breast, mouth. Go ahead and describe her. You know, describe some specifics. Let's get that. Because we want to fall in love with a character. We don't want to just like a character. We want to fall in love. Uh, something was coming. See, that's a great in <laughs> that's a great place to insert some sensory detail. Ishii tried to run. See, these are tells, not shows. So get out of the habit, ladies and gentlemen. Show, not tell. Uh, as we've seen this author do before. So there's this is not something I'm going to pepper on too much. Because we've seen evidence that the author knows. Just double check areas where you can show not tell in replace for show not tell. Unlike running in dreams, her motion wasn't slow or dreamlike. Okay, she might be in the dream. What? Question mark. Is she didn't know? That's a tell not show. That can go. Uh, what? That could be in dialogue tags. Or sorry, that could be in quotation marks. Um, you could use a dialogue tag there, but I wouldn't recommend. I would actually just kind of remove that. So if this is going to be the first dialogue in the novel, make it symbolic. You know, like elevate it, make it encompassing. Uh, almost, yeah, like a lot of times I really like to say symbolic. Make it almost like an in impact statement. So ladies and gentlemen, authors out there, double check your first dialogue. Make sure, you know, it's really where you want it to be. So I think this one is what? Um, I would elevate that. The light was a woman, a blonde hair. Uh, really short day. Strap on the side. So he's elevating a character profile, nice character appearance. I would love to see this from the main character. Uh, illumination. He shaped his scene. So <laughs> I'm loving this presentation. So uh, we're getting a lot of nice, good real estate. So a lot of people like double space and then really just kind of just eliminate a lot of good, valuable real estate. The author is really kind of making use of all of it here. That's nice. Uh, there is no strength left. Watch out for the tells, not shows. Drop to her knees to see a little crest and a black bundle at her side, pooling, blood pooling on the ground. Damn. Yeah, I love the aesthetic being set here. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're coming out the gates with a nice, beautiful aesthetic, setting this odd, cryptic picture, that is just really cool. Um, so we don't want to jump too much into events right off the bat. We want to get to know our characters. And it looks like we're getting this nice situation here. I would love to see these main characters elevated um, a little bit faster, especially by this point. Um, brother, it's only the second page of course but you know we're already getting into a lot of different things where a nice character profile would help as it turned a wave of light and wind to hit Ishii and she turned to face it uh the vibration of the ground made her skeleton a lot of good okay so that's sensory detail in the form of feel that's nice it penetrated everything watch out for these tells now i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot of tells around uh it penetrated everything like that can go i would i would actually erase that uh the light was brown and Ishii could see nothing i'll take that out too uh or maybe rather i'd reformat it she held her glove out to block the light from her eyes. It was a poor shield light and hitting her face, blowing the back of her when she was blind. And she was in her kanji. Uh, her name was kanji. Interesting. Well, this is, there's a lot of different foreign names here already. That's pretty interesting. Uh, so usually, especially when you're writing fantasy fiction, this is not clear, inconclusive. If this is a fantasy fiction so far. But uh, when you're writing in foreign concepts, foreign names, it sometimes helps to have like some sort of rhyme or reason to it. Um, a lot of people, when they're writing sci-fi, they just put, like, random names that, like, don't make sense. I'll be like, you know, where do you get this name? I don't know. It just sounded cool. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that works out great sometimes. Not all the time. Uh, maybe it could help if there's a rhyme or reason. Sometimes. Then everything went white. A man's cruel low laugh. Nice sensory detail. What I love about this author's writing style is every single little paragraph I'm seeing. Uh, well, they're these little sandwich paragraphs. I like uh, cheeseburger paragraphs. <laughs> nice, healthy five sentences. We're getting a lot of sandwich ones. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I love the fact that this author is sensory detail, sensory detail, sensory detail. Uh, if you read George R. R. Martin, like uh, the Game of Thrones book, <laughs> which I have somewhere around here, every single paragraph, he's world building. Every single little paragraph. You can't find a paragraph <laughs> where he's not world building. So the fact that this author is just constantly getting that sensory detail in there is just such a treat. Uh, sensory detail, neurologically speaking, is kind of like a candy treat for the reader's mind. Especially if they're in that theta state of mind, which usually happens kind of like mid-book. Or even mid-chapter, you know, depending on how people read. Once they get into that reading mood, uh, then their brain starts to slow down a little bit and focus in. So, mistress, mistress. Okay, so there's the first dialogue. It's in quotation. Uh, what? 
could have been that. Didn't seem like it, but Mr. Smith's that could be elevated. Uh, so we want to use our dialogue to move the plot forward, contribute to character development, and uh, maybe Cecilia could say something a little different, more encompassing of the novel as a whole. That would be nice. Uh, I would reformat the first dialogue. Double check. That's what you want as your first dialogue. Stood trembling. She put one look in her. There's no great concern, Cecilia Chan. Oh, could this be? Could this be uh, situated in Japan? Uh, I know that they say that as like kind of a, a term of endearment at the end of a, a sentence or at the end of a name. They use all like kind of like little tags. <laughs> Japanese people use tags at the end when they uh, talk to people's names. Pretty interesting. Uh, let's check out this dialogue. Let's really break apart this dialogue. There's a lot to go over too. We're already at 15 minutes, so let's try to pick up the pace a little bit here. But let's get let's get the most important parts out of the way. Um, there's no need for concern to see Elia Chan. She said she couldn't go up with the term of her voice. Sensory detail, but mistress. So like, um, but mistress, that can go. Uh, maybe you could use it to elevate. Same with no butts, apprentice. Uh, that could go already. Try to push things forward, especially with your first dialogue. Go back to sleep. It was only a dream. Do 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 do. -do. Some dream. Uh, maybe some voice in there would help. That'd be nice. Uh, like with anguish. Some dream. I worry about you. She said yawning once more. We have a busy day tomorrow. Okay, so that could be utilized to move the plot forward. That's the most important dialogue I'm seeing. We have a busy day tomorrow. So, uh, go ahead. What is going on tomorrow? Let's, what I want to know. So, uh, wow. Okay, as a seer. So this is going to be, <laughs> we're going to have a magic system in the mix. So everybody knows with the magic system. Well, not everybody knows, but we know as authors with the magic system, there are certain proponents that should be in place, including drawbacks, you know, a system to it. That's why it's called the magic system. A lot of people make their systems where you can increase, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit different for every novel. Definitely make sure yours is unique, but also familiar. So, um... As opposed for a prologue, a prologue used to set the precedent of the events at large. We spent this prologue kind of like in this little dream type thing. Really interesting scenario. Uh, it doesn't have any specific events. I think the only, the most prologue-ish part is uh, right here in this last ch this last, last chunk where they're talking to each other. Because that's setting the precedent for the rest of the novel. Uh, double check that you can make. The rest of that prologue, uh, indicative of that. Okay, oh, so the Brazilian crypt job. Ooh. <laughs> uh, then we have that, that creepy symbol again. Center this is my recommendation. Nice center of this uh, title. Centrilio Solo Pilha Brazil. Um, yes, very cool. I like when people do that. Just double check that we're also describing our settings, elevating our settings, and not depending on those, I'm not saying that's what this author is doing, but uh, double check, because I've seen that many times where people will put the, uh, they'll put the, um, the location, the time, and then they don't describe the setting. It's like, yeah, okay, Brazil. Okay, you know, just for example, like, yeah, Brazil, but where? You know, what's going on? What are we in the rainforest in the middle of the sea? Double check. In our mini Paul Kander stood on the back of the inside. So we're now we're with a new character of the Hotel Jindai. I like how he's adding the specific setting. You know, very good, very good. Of Sao Paulo, he wore a dark coat, cool, elevating character appearance, uh, dark glasses, covered his eyes. So we're describing the clothing, really nice, really nice. Uh, what about, you know, the other tall height? You know, is he 300 pounds? Is he seven foot tall? These are things, you know, you got to kind of ridiculously ask yourself. Because um, a lot of people in fantasy fiction, they will not describe those things, the height or even, you know, don't be afraid of ethnicity either. You know, go ahead. Those are all part of the character profiles. So definitely pepper it in when you can. Don't oh, it doesn't have to be a baseball card, but you know get a little peppered in there. So you know maybe hair color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's double check. Uh, even though those glasses, Paul can see across the pause at the cathedral. Did I say? Hmm. This is a very uh, really expansive novel. I like this. I like this. So I've been getting a lot of manuscripts that I'm not going to call amateur, but I am going to call first. I'm going to say first draft appearance. This does not have the appearance of a first draft. This has the appearance of something that has already been edited to an extent. So that's very good. I love that. So at this point, hmm, I wonder what these critics could even do. You know, usually beta reads are for people that are still not published. This is very good. Uh, so it already seems like the story can stand on its legs. Um, looks like the author knows what he's doing or they know what they're doing. So you've seen the cathedral, maybe describe the cathedral, maybe elevate that setting. Cathedrals are very good real estate for uh, really cool, really cool expansive settings. So Paul and his master, the practitioners, members of the Brotherhood of the Shadows. Ooh. Guild of Necromancers. Oh, so this is going to have a magic system. I love that. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That's that's really cool. 
All right, so, yeah, we know Magic Systems. They're a system for a reason. Describe. It's part of world building as well. I would say Magic System is like kind of like an underscore <laughs> of world building. So double check when you're world building, you're making the unfamiliar feel familiar. So a necromancer. Don't assume. This is a big problem, too, with fantasy fiction. Uh, don't assume the reader knows what that is. <laughs> you know? Like, so a necromancer, uh, what, what is that? You know what I mean? That's something you could go into detail. Me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know it. Okay. I'm not going to the crypts every day, but... Uh, don't assume the reader knows, especially when you're constructing the magic systems, when you're world building. Uh, double check, you know, plotting to rob a bank at Fort Knox. I like Fort Knox. Uh, I would go to the Fort Knox studios. <laughs> I was hoping I could go today, but I'm not going today. Uh, it's like kind of like a rock and roll practice spot. Really cool, really cool. But he's talking about Fort Knox, the place with all the gold. Uh, just with Scholar Paul. Okay, world building. Interesting. This seems like a very elevated novel. Like, it really does. It really does. Love this. Uh, okay, Guildmaster, Brother Shadows, going into the world building. Mm, it's kind of like uh, that prologue in this. The prologue almost seems a little bit unnecessary. Uh, that's what I'm asking myself right now at this point. I'm like, what was that prologue for? Um, is it necessary? These are questions you got to ask. Uh, it was very entertaining, so I'm not going to say take it up. Uh, maybe pepper in more relevance. When Paul had his first meeting, a uh, mention of summoning. Ooh, lots of summoning. So necromancers summon dead people. Go ahead and really get that in there. If this is still in the drafting stage, it doesn't seem like it's in like that 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 infantile infantile stage. This seems like it's really well developed. So with that being said, you know, go ahead. You know, here's a good spot to kind of describe what a necromancer is. Uh, so a grimoire, if people do not know, that is like a book of shadows. Ooh. <laughs> it's got like spells and like all different types of summoning type things. Really interesting. I've read a lot of grimoires, actually. Uh, Solomonic magic. Maybe the author wants to read real ones. I don't know. <laughs> That's up to you. But definitely it is a type of occult and esoteric literature is a whole genre of really crazy out there stuff. So, um if this author has read grimoires, maybe that could elevate and add some a bit more authenticity there to like maybe construct it. Like so that symbol at the beginning of the book, you would see a lot of those in a grimoire. A grimoire, believe it or not, are usually very image heavy. Uh, a lot of this beautiful imagery too. A lot of really beautiful imagery. Uh, and you'll see in grimoires. <laughs> uh, are they safe to read? I don't think so. Okay. Host to DNA. Every time I've read one, I've been like, oh, scary um but at the same time they're not so scary uh paul liked the way he said difference drawing it out three musical syllables good sensory detail this is what i love about this they see ladies and gentlemen take notes because if you're able to pepper in the sensory detail the same way george r r martin peppers in that world building every paragraph that is just great i'm loving this so uh and i'm saying that with absolute sincerity you know you got to give that balance between compliments and constructive criticism that's the indication of a good beta reader. So, you know, fellow beta readers out there, go ahead. We're sorry to lift the author up, not knock him down. Here, it looks like, uh, you know, the book is standing on its two legs. Uh, for effigy, he's like, this is something I would, I would be, I'd be like, okay, I, I'd like to buy this. You know, this is pretty interesting. Um, it seems like it's well constructed. And it is presentation-wise. Uh, maybe I would elevate those main characters a little bit more because we're going into a lot of foreign concepts. So I would say the... Uh, main the character to foreign concept balance is a little bit off the like so the emphasis is a little a lot on world building and i would like to see more on uh more balance with the actual main characters though take it slow you know at the same time we got this expansive stuff but really kind of make sure we got the ducks in a row uh, i would like to see these main characters elevated a bit more so here we go with the events the next landmark is the inciting incident so we're going to be looking at that introduction is used to do exactly what it is called the introduction introducing characters really lay that strong foundation um spherical tree is good nice little setting here world building uh, interesting <laughs> see this is a book i feel like i'm actually just reading and not critiquing this is pretty cool this is this at this point is feeling more like a commentary I mean, these are all commentaries, but this feels like, you know, I'm actually just kind of, just really just kind of peppering in there. Usually I'm like, okay, this, that, that, and the other. So even if we don't, even if we hit that 30 minute mark, I'm not worried about this book at all. I think this book is definitely one of the most neat I've gotten this month. Really good. Really good. Uh, really good things. A lot of good stuff going on right now. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to 
really get into the details of the big plot structure. Uh, that's something that people would pay me a lot of money for, <laughs> but I'm not going to charge because this is a uh, pro bono, uh, as they usually are, because it's just so fun to do. Uh, it keeps me on my toes, too. Right now, I'm doing a lot of ghost writing, <laughs> so I, got, I can't lose the beta read uh, stuff. Okay, your current guard, maybe uh, elevate the guard. So uh, this is this guard is doing what's called the everyman, okay? And if you've seen the video on the Jungian archetypes, this is also the everyman here. But the everyman I'm describing here is basically in world building, it's just kind of like your commoner. That's kind of, a, a, I guess, a more common name for it is a commoner. So when you're world building and you could describe the commoner, the everyman, the everyday dude, that can add so much to world building. Because like, let's say, you know, if your people are poor and you describe them all as poor, you can really elevate the circumstances there. So, ladies and gentlemen, do not be afraid to describe your everyman. Don't be afraid to describe your commoners, if you will. Uh, that could really be a big thing for world building. Really add. You know, a lot of people, they will neglect that. <laughs> and they just assume that people just know what the regular people look like. Uh, they don't. Okay, it looks like so the magic system is being elaborated on there. I was just kind of reading through it. Very good. Very good. Very good. Magic system is important. There's a lot of good check marks. I'm over here just kind of checking things off. And it looks like magic system, check, world building, check. Characters are described in detail, oh, just like a little bit more. So check, presentation, check. Uh, wow. Um, hmm. Setting, setting is described well, check. Uh, could be used a little elevated setting, a little more elevated, more familiarity, I suppose. Uh, sensory detail, you know. Uh, I'm not worried. Maybe dialogue. I would like to see more elevated dialogue. That's true. Maybe uh, a little bit more elevated dialogue, but it doesn't even that doesn't even look too bad. Uh, the narrative to dialogue balance is it's a little bit uh it's a little bit narrative heavy. I would like to see a little bit more dialogue there, and I would like to see the dialogue move things forward. So if we're looking at the line right there, uh, you guys can see it, but on the screen you'll probably see it. Uh, the line is, "Come, little rats, come out to play." Okay. Uh, so come little rats. How's that moving the plot forward? You know, maybe he's calling out a little bit of rats and she's saying just double check that when you're having these like uh, onion chops onion chops uh, No ping pong dialogue in this novel so far, which is really happy makes me happy I do not like ping pong dialogue personally as you guys know um, But that is fine. I would say 75% of the time. They're not constructed well enough So right here uh, at the top of this page. Uh oh that can go you don't need that um, black roof began to shake. Like, is we elevating the uh, elevating there? Beast fighting around his feet. Paul heard. So we're getting a lot of action tension. So, ladies and gentlemen, the rising action is for increasing tension. Um, so we're looking for the inciting incident. Right now, he's laying the introduction. So in the introduction here, he's introducing the magic system. Very good. I'm waiting for that inciting incident. By now, uh, we should get a handle of genre. The, the author did a good job. He established the elements of genre. Um, plot type is what I'm looking for as well. What kind of plot is this? Is this a metamorphosis plot? Ascension, descension. A lot of times the hero's journey is the number one go-to with uh, fantasy fiction. Uh, quest plot, it's a rescue plot, escape plot. There's so many different types of plots. Uh, usually at the inciting incident, we should have a good grasp of what kind of plot it is. So right now, I do not know, but I'm loving this world. I'm loving this, I'm loving this world we're constructed in. Um... I'm on page 14. Okay, uh, let's see. Got, where are we at? 20 minutes? Okay, okay, okay. Not a problem, not a problem. I think we'll make it in the top. Uh, the last one was 35 minutes. <laughs> uh, let's get a move on. We'll pick up the pace a little bit. Oh, mm, look at that. Even the dialogue is including uh, foreign words. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, double check. He, I, he, he said Portuguese words there, so that's good. Uh, you know, sometimes... You know what? Uh, this book is about Nazis. I would love to see some German in here. I would love to see some German language. I study German. Uh, I'm 3% fluent Ooh. <laughs> on Duolingo. But uh, I can understand German more than I could speak it. But I would love to see some German in this novel. Um, uh, historically, I believe a lot of Nazis fled Nazi Germany and went to Brazil. Maybe this is kind of where that's going. Enough. Stop. Uh, right there. So enough. Stop. Maybe he could declare what they're doing. Enough. Stop. Stop, you know, messing around over there, you jerks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's say a bunch of maybe specifics is where I'll put there. The narrative to dialogue balance is was kind of off. So we're seeing some dialogue approach. Let's see a new character approaching. Uh, so this is that onion shop dialogue I was talking about. Uh, so double check. It's not bad here. Just uh, it's actually it's really infantile right here. It's not it's not a lot. 
Um, so a lot of times people will not include dialogue text. It just, a lot of things get lost in tra translation, you know what I mean? So right here, uh, it seems like we got a lot of good dialogue. Uh, because he's using those tags, but those dialogue tags could be elevated a little bit. We're still in the stage of knowing our main characters, getting to know them. So seeing their voice would help. Paul, for example, uh, you could help. Uh, I'm just trying to find how this dialogue is moving things forward. He's still talking about the rats. Rats are you, rats are you. He's trying to do something with the poor rats. Hey, gross. Uh, Levante sus miles. Levante sus miles. I think that means get up right now, you mouse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I know Spanish, but uh, I'm pretty sure it means get up, you mouse. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Casa de Volvo, Volvo, no, de de chao. So, uh, wow. Well, um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Waiting for the inciting incident. A lot of this stuff can probably just be cut down a little bit because let's get to those uh, landmarks, you know? Uh, so let's see. What did you get what you need? Yes, bone remained. So I want to see what's kicking off the plot at large. That's what that's the thing here is I want to feel what's getting out there. A lot of this is kind of fluff. Some of this is kind of starting to lose reason. Uh, like there's a uh, purpose rather. So double check that the things we're doing have purpose. Not all of this, just some of it can be considered fluff. Uh, you pointed log in a circle back to the monster. We're finding on important gram. What this is doing, though, is really interesting. It's really opening up that magic system and really opening up that world building. So I'm, I'm, li I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Um, Bartholomew and Mumbo Lorenzo. I would like to see more expansive dialogue. Uh, let's double check. That's nice. Like smart knife. I don't understand why we draw the pentagram. Okay, this is cool. So this may, right here, I like the sense. I don't understand why we draw the pentagram. So that may introduce what could be called a drawback in a magic system. So maybe they need it or else something bad can happen. This is also the case in real life grimoires. You need a circle to put the, you know, the squealies in. <laughs> or else they can get out and, you know, kind of attack. So I'm liking how there's almost this authenticity to it a little bit. Um, yeah, no, actually, it's, it seems pretty authentic. If you open up a real grimoire, you know, you'll see a lot of this. Uh, that guy gave me power, ride the horse. See, that's a spell. Um... Let's see. Just kind of reading, reading, reading. If uh, it was doing the report, it would just say reading. Uh, okay. Leg bomb make me strong. Uh, Bartholomew, Gismato, Arise. Uh, hmm. Man, I'm trying to find the plot at large. Plot structure, plot system. That's one thing that I really, I'm, I'm kind of looking for here. It's like all those check marks are off. I just want to find that plot type. Usually, I know it's still the early stage of the book, but usually by now, you could still kind of get a little inkling, a little clues to be the plot at large, especially by the inciting incident. Okay, so let's double check that. Watch out for fluff, because I'm seeing not. Mm, I am seeing fluff material. Just maybe double check if this is already. Because I saw the table of contents and everything. Usually by that time, this is uh like pe past beta readers. Usually people will use beta readers before this, but it seems like uh you know because sometimes if you do rewrites after a beta read, then the whole thing <laughs> kind of falls around. So double check. Uh, let's see, looking for inciting incidents. His next question when she was the queen, had the child, how she had him. Reading, reading, reading. Uh, careful with the foreign language, maybe not too much. Uh, let's get some, let's start to make things feel more natural. I'm still trying to figure out who these main characters are. I want to love the main characters. It should be love at first sight. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to latch on to, uh, Paul, for example. And I'm trying to, like, really see what, what can I make out of his character. Where can I find myself in Paul? Relatability, memorability, unique characteristics. What is Paul's unique characteristic? He's a necromancer, but can he have another one? I say the more the merrier sometimes. Okay. Especially on appearance, that could help. Uh, Guzmao, and it's not just enough to do it one time. You do it kind of like making a risotto. You make a strong foundation, then you kind of slowly keep on ladling in every once in a while. Uh, okay, so what we've done. There is a lot of good writing in here. Ah, uh, Paul, me. Uh, consistent. Bartholomew Lorenzo. That's some, like a lot of this can probably go. Um, let's see. Have your landmarks. Your landmarks are kind of have <laughs> your landmarks in a book have their own kind of like gravitational field. You know what I mean? So things should be being pulled towards the inciting incident. And if they're, you know, things should be pulled to the next big event in the rising action. It should, everything should be constantly have this magnetic attraction to these landmarks. So double check that there is uh, no material that are just kind of floating along. Everything should be gravitating and kind of 
having purpose bouncing off each other. And it looks like we're at the last page. Oh, not yet. Uh, but some man kicked Link in the side and grimaced in pain. Uh, maybe you could describe, you know, how the pain, you know, how the pain feels for some uh, sensory detail in the form of feel. They're telling us to shut up. You're under arrest. Paul said, uh, di elevate some of Paul's dialogue tags. Not all of them, but maybe I would like to see some uh, dialogue tags elevated from Paul. Because we can use elevated dialogue tags to contribute to setting, plot movement, as well as character profile. So Paul, at this point, still needs the main characters. Just all of them. Still needs some elevation. So double check where you can take out the fluff, anything that may not be contributing to the story, and put something that we know is going to, such as contributing the character profile. You know, uh, I think this one's pretty much done. Uh, here we go. Uh, chapter two, pretty interesting. Um, I'm, I'm wondering where those other characters from the beginning are gonna fit in this novel. I'm gonna have to probably pick up the whole book, which I'm more than happy to do. Just double check. Okay, uh, wow, you guys can't see this, but I can see it. Let me try to move this up a little bit. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now it's all gone. Oh, wow, one second. So, let me try to size this down. Sorry, I know I'm taking precious screen time here. <laughs> My computer is like, bro, you know, come on. Stop doing these 30-minute videos. And I'm like, I'll take as many videos as I want. My, my CPU is like, dude, what's going on? Okay, uh, death in facility. Oh, man, this is going to be a crazy thing to get. Uh, go over here. There we go there. All right, chasing death. Now we're going to go squeeze this that way. <laughs> How does this work? Uh, go up now. Okay, there you go. All right, a little bit to the left. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Excuse my dust. And uh, yet, no, I do not edit these videos. I don't edit them. It's just like a... Kind of like a freestyle, just goes off the top, but boom. So, death in Piccadilly. Okay, so we got the uh, the setting there. I like how that's consistent, too. Because sometimes people will make a format and it just kind of falls off. Uh, I love the consistency. There's a lot of good consistency in the thing. Cecilia Moran, still in the doorway of the hotel. Um, feel free to elevate that setting, especially if you're beginning on setting. If you're beginning on certain elements, feel free to elevate it. So, if you're beginning a chapter, you're transitioning in on a certain element, feel free to elevate Despite her shadows and dark glasses, aside from the corpse, it was cozy. There's some, like, little peppered humor in here. I like that. Uh, when was your grandfather? So, ladies and gentlemen, you probably are not going to be able to see this last part. Let me double check if I can squeeze. Go up. Where is this? All right, yeah, 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 there you go. Okay, so that's probably the... Oh, oh there it is. Did it. <laughs> Ba-boom. All right, so there was this big headboard over there. Okay, so now we're elevating the setting. Couldn't see before. Great, great, great. Um, WC, kind of advanced. That's what Mistress Ishii said. Mistress Cecilia, the other girls, not interested in makeup or boy bands. Boy bands. Um, okay, so now let's let's reverse a little bit. So that's that's a modern day concept, boy bands. So uh, when you think of boy bands, you might think of Beatles earliest. You might think of Backstreet Boys. So <laughs> regardless, we're gonna find ourselves within that range here. So that adds a whole new dynamic. Um, I would actually just take that out because that could add a lot more confusion than it's worth. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm glad I caught that too. So that kind of puts us in a certain date range here. Uh, I liked how it was more open-ended world fantasy. I liked that. So I would remove, I would seriously just remove boy bands. <laughs> um, now we're going to see at age 15, she was going to do that. She was saw her first necromancy. Yeah, because it's uh, that could cause reader dissonance. Is it causing it right now? I think a little bit on my end, because I'm like, okay, well, we had this whole almost like expansive world. Now we're bringing in real life concepts that are more trouble than it's worth, in my opinion. Uh, so I would remove that. Seven wands, the house of the nine jasmine. Oh, let's double check. Uh, Cecilia was struck dumb by her beauty. That's the last one there. Uh, well, her lips were blood red, but Cecilia was still quite dirty. Not <laughs> dirty, the beauty. Very good, very good. Well, the video is at 40 minutes. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of minutes. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good job to double check. Uh, sorry, we're going to double check one last thing and then we'll end the video strong. So, yeah, great job, author. Presentation is awesome. Like, if I had a checklist, which I usually kind of do, check, 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 check. A lot of the marks are checked off. Settings are elevated, very good. Um, look for, you know, look for ways where you can pepper in that setting a little more. Look for elevation. But what I love, check, 
is that sensory detail. He's pulling like what a George R. R. Martin would do with his world building. It's almost like every other thing, there's a lot of good sensory detail. That's good candy for the reader brain. Oh, very good. Uh, so main characters, main characters are presented. There's an elevated foundation for them, but I would like a little bit more. Like right now, like I'm going to walk away from this remembering the presentation, remembering the magic system, check, check, which includes drawbacks in this novel, as well as the system within itself. You know, they go open the grimoire, they practice. That's all part of the magic system. I would like, like at this point, I know the magic system more than I know the main character. Um, I would actually kind of find that balance. Get the main character elevated, because right now we have... Several different characters, Pepper, but they're getting lost in translation. Uh, they're not memorable. So double check and look for good real estate to mem uh, to elevate them. Like, for example, right here, Paul said he was walking backwards. You know, that that within itself is good. You can use that real estate to elevate the character's profile a little bit. You know, describe him. Uh, that's the big, that's the, actually the big head honk show here that I would, the number one thing is I would recommend is work on these main characters. And that's very important. Um, elevate your main characters make the reader fall in love with them right now i don't i don't know i don't love paul <laughs> sorry paul i just i you know I mean, he's not memorable but everything else is really good presentation check a lot of consistency uh no errors not a lot of errors i'm seeing i don't think i've seen too many things that have stood out as like grammatical errors uh presentation is awesome it looks like it has been edited foreign concepts a lot of good foreign concepts magic system presented world building we're using real life we're real world mixed with this uh fantasy world i like when people do that just make sure there's no dissonance so uh like i said with the uh boy band thing that could be more trouble than it's worth double check uh like uh i remember we were dating reading the fantasy world with uh the cars that were from the 50s but it's our modern world it was very strange um, yeah, so definitely double check, like elevate your dialogue too. That's another thing I'll work on. So my recommendation is characters and dialogue. Uh, the dialogue, a lot of it, it's not moving the plot forward. Not all of it, just a lot of it is not. So double check where you could do that. Um, I love the foreign, I love the foreign names here. I wish I could have got to the concept of Nazis earlier too, especially if it's in the title. I would pepper in that concept a little bit more, especially if it's going to be more of a central theme later. And, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, very good. So, uh, good job. Let me double check one other thing. Uh, one more thing. I am so sorry for uh, double checking. No, I'm not sorry. Because checking double time is always good. So, good job, author Thomas Lango. And I'm also going to give a shout out to the co-author, which, wow, very good. Uh, let's see. Veronica L. Lyons. Really good. Or Lyons. Awesome. So, keep on writing. Good job. Like, subscribe. Keep on looking out for this author's books. It's going to be amazing. Keep on running. Where's the off button? <laughs>